like a like a like an oven. And then it begins to cool. And if we had been around in those days, we probably would have said, well, it's going to level out and everything will be fine. Except that, that the sun decided that we were going to cool off more than usual. And since about 35 million years ago, we have been, our planet has been in an ice age. And we, our civilization, the one that is reflected by all these bright minds in this room is the product of that ice age. How did it start? Let me give you a one minute summary of what we now know. 36 million years ago, there are, by the way, there are, by the way, names for these times. And you, I, I just hope, uh, let, me, um, <clears throat> let me hope, suggest to you that, that just like you, you, uh, you, you learn a when you're a child, the names of the days of the week and the months of the year. We should know these times after the 65 million year impact because we are, we are so closely intertwined with them. Paleocene, you have the heat. Eocene, you begin to get the cooling. First hint that there's going to be an ice age. Oligocene, it gets colder. Miocene, it gets really cold. Pliocene, it plunges. Pleistocene, us. And it's just like every time there's a the geological division, it's based on precipitous temperature change. So, 36, remember this number sometime, 36 billion years ago, ice first begins to form on the Antarctic Peninsula. It has been there ever since. The ice sheet on, on the Antarctic Peninsula has almost completely melted away, but not quite. And the pack ice has all disappeared and sea levels, and then it's come back again and grown big. But 36 million years ago, Antarctica. 24 million years ago, a remarkable regularity really, but we have pretty good evidence that 24 million years ago, the first great glaciers formed on the, on the mountains, even at the equator, Kilimanjaro, the Andes, New Guinea, glaciers that have been there for off and on for 24 million years. 12 million years ago, the um, uh, ice, the ice covers the ocean at the North Pole, and there has been North Polar ice off and on ever since. So we have a situation where, where you watch the temperatures. It doesn't, of course, go in a straight line, but it sort of drops like this. It goes down in this sort of fashion. And now comes about six billion years ago. We come to the Pliocene, and the Pliocene produces a plunge that, that basically takes temperatures down to the lowest they have been for 200 million years. The Pliocene, it's worth remembering this, this word. It's only six million years ago, and uh, as you undoubtedly know, big things were happening in Africa at that time. Um, the, the, uh, the primates were there, hominids are arising. This is the time when, when uh, um, uh, Homo erectus and Homo habilis are beginning to stumble around in the savanna and the rainforest. And, 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 and many of the lineages died out because they couldn't cope with temperatures dropping that rapidly. But people forget that when an ice age happens, it, it doesn't just affect the polar areas, it affects the entire planet. Africa's taller mountains, Mount Kenya, Mount Longano, Mount Kilimanjaro, Uhuru, uh, were all covered with ice, but so were ruins Zori in the lower mountains. It was very tough to live in Africa and to survive in Africa at that time. And that goes on to two million years ago, and, 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 and this is where we are now. And, and this is another word I would like to ask you to, to never forget. We are living today in an epoch called the Pleistocene. The Pleistocene, and that uh, we now know so much more about what weather and climate have been like over these past two million years that we can relate what is happening today, literally, to this latest drama.